It is the most special place on the planet. Hawaii may be her special place, but in Washington, Gabbard's already proven herself to be a special kind of politician. Engaging, 34 years young, with a million watt smile and potential to match. In less than three years on the Hill, she's earned a reputation as one of her party's rising stars. The first American Samoan elected to Congress. The first elected Hindu. A U.S. military combat veteran who's also the vice chair of her party's national committee. She's made headlines as an outspoken critic of the president. And did I mention she's also a Democrat? I work for the people of Hawaii who... who gave me this responsibility, who gave me this job. I work for the American people uh, and I do my best every day to, um, to do what is in their best interest. But for all her rock star status, Gabbard's seen as a rebel within her own party, someone who pulls no punches when it comes to speaking her mind, even if it raises eyebrows among fellow Democrats, like when she expressed frustration about her party's lack of presidential debates, seen by some critics as a means of protecting the candidacy of Hillary Clinton. When we look at what's in the best interest of our country, which is how I think we should make all of our decisions, uh, less dialogue does not help us. An area where Gabbard also thinks there should be much more dialogue is over what to do about ISIS in Syria. She's criticized the Obama administration's strategy of attempting to topple dictator Bashar al-Assad as an unlawful use of power. This is a war that I believe is illegal and counterproductive. It's illegal because Congress hasn't declared war against Syria and it's counterproductive because it helps our enemy, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, these other groups achieve their objective. Worse, with so many competing interests in one war zone, the army captain warned that an accidental entanglement with the Russians could lead to a nuclear catastrophe. This will kick off a world war and potentially a nuclear war given the fact that the United States and Russia are the two countries on this planet that are literally minutes away from pushing that button and launching a nuclear bomb. She's even pushed back at Mr. Obama for his failure to speak candidly about Islamic extremism. It doesn't take a military genius to understand that you have to know your enemy before you can defeat them. It's a big mistake to not clearly identify who your enemy is. Gabbard says it's no mistake that she's outspoken. It's likely a byproduct of her upbringing. A homeschooled daughter of educators, including a father who was once a state lawmaker. Tulsi first ran for office at the age of 21, and she's been serving the people of her state in one capacity or another ever since. Aloha is, is something that um, is universal and that we need more of, especially in Washington. If people would lead with aloha, lead with a heart. That clip of the video that I played was just to give you a bit of background on who Tulsi Gabbard is, because it turns out that she's now announced that she's going to run for president in 2020. On paper, you'd think that Tulsi Gabbard was the perfect democratic and progressive candidate. She's a woman of colour, she's electable, she knows what she's doing, and she's got service under her belt, which she can use to parlay against the more military-minded Republican establishment. She is, in fact, in a fantastic place to interface with the people outside of the Democratic Party who are starting to view the Democratic Party as fucking nuts, but instead of recognising these demonstrable strengths of Tulsi Gabbard as a politician, let alone as the leader and presidential candidate of the Democratic Party, they fucking hate her. Twitter is just filled with stuff like this. Sanders Institute fellow Tulsi Gabbard is a homophobe and an Assad apologist who has declared progressive simply because she endorsed Bernie Sanders in 2016, yet no one ever challenged Bernie's alliance with a woman who defends authoritarianism. This genius is arguing for the neocon plan to overthrow Assad because Assad is just the lesser of two evils. It's either Assad or it's ISIS and Russia and whoever else getting in instead. There's no guarantee that if we get rid of Assad that we solve any problems, and in fact I think the opposite will happen as we saw in Iraq. So I just don't think that's entirely wise, but for some reason he's with the neocons. Ragnarok Lobster is with Dick Cheney. But the thing is, Tulsi Gabbard isn't. She's not for regime change in the Middle East. And so her saying, well, look, I think we should just leave Assad as it is so we're not causing any more trouble than there is already, prevent ISIS from actually destroying everything in the region, perhaps that will be a better alternative, if not optimal, 
and that makes her a defender of authoritarianism. Just look at the responses that far-left outlets like Mother Jones are doing. And I can't believe that something called Mother Jones is something I would naturally consider far-left, but it's just the propaganda that comes from it and the people who write for it are just so radical. Tulsi Gabbard is running for president. Can liberals forgive her supporting dictators and nationalists? What? She is a nationalist. She is in favor of the American nation state. She said everything she does is with that interest in mind. Why wouldn't it be? She's an elected politician of that fucking country. But that's how unbelievably weird the alliance between, like, the globalists and the neocons is, and then the progressives who also believe that borders are terrible. It's such a bizarre coalition of people who are being put against perfectly sane and reasonable people. Whenever you watch her in an interview, she just is calm and collected, and she knows what she's doing, because Tulsi Gabbard is legitimate. Tulsi Gabbard actually earned what she has and deserves it. And that's, that's fucking alien to the progressive mind, but worse still, just fucking worse for them. She is also a woman of colour. <laughs> So I just want to I just want to congratulate Tulsi Gabbard for the like 20 year shit post at the expense of the progressives. If women of color don't need your fucking help and they don't even agree with you and now you hate them. I mean look at these fucking responses. Can we support for, like it, as if this is a charitable interpretation of anyone's position. Can we forgive her supporting dictators? No. No, 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 no. Constant fucking no's. Thousands of no's. Just, they don't want Tulsi at all. Because she's reasonable and centrist and liberal. Not progressive. That's the difference, I think. I mean, just, they they genuinely loathe it. Now, I could, I could dig up a lot worse ones than these. But I think this just proves the point. Uh, but I'm, I've been looking at these for ages. I mean, there are some people who are vicious against her as well. She is a populist. That's the thing. She is a populist liberal. She criticizes Obama. She criticizes Trump. She is not a partisan in the way that they need her to be. And I'll tell you what, I'll probably do a video at some point about uh, the the partisans of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Just, it's it's truly messianic. It's religious. It's talking exclusively about feelings. And it's just about how she makes them feel like someone understands and reflects their values back. It's like, okay, that's great. <laughs> that's, that's great for you. I'm glad that you have a, a, a religious belief in this new prophet. I'm really glad, right? I just think Tulsi's probably quite a good idea. But honestly, I don't think it's a good idea for her to run in 2020, to be honest, because I want Trump to win. Because he's not finished turning the lunatics in the Democratic Party into their most radical selves. I really like the, the way that The Spectator have described this, because this is how I've been viewing it from my perspective as well. So, few c contemporary American political figures generate such unique disdain as Tulsi Gabbard, the Democratic congresswoman from Hawaii. The disdain is not unique for its tenacity. Plenty of figures are on the bitter end of receiving criticism, but for its political composition, Gabbard straddles an ideological fissure that spans the Democratic and Republican Party coalitions in ways which are difficult to pin down. Despite being an avowed progressive on policy issues and a frequent critic of President Trump, her most committed antagonists appear on the left. That's because she is one of the filthy centrists that aren't trying to drag the party to its most radical fringe so the radical fringe can justify itself in whichever way it wants to avoid dialogue. Gabbard even offered to work with Donald Trump and obviously being one of the few Democrats who was going to do that instead of condemn him outright. And obviously that got her in trouble too. So the fact that she doesn't want to tear apart the United States as a democracy and just ignore and justify hatred of the other side is why she is being kicked out of the club effectively what I'm saying is that she's been ostracized from the cult for not following the group think and the, being part of the group mind under their newly appointed cult leader, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I actually like Tulsi Gabbard quite a lot as a politician and from what I've seen her as a person. So I'm not happy that she's actually running now. I would have liked her to have run after Trump. But my problem isn't with Tulsi Gabbard in any way, shape or form. In fact, she's actually one of my favorite politicians in the U.S., my problem is with the party that she is a member of. It's full of people who I consider to be terrible, openly in many ways, and it's full of activists, and it's supported by activists who are much worse. So, I mean, good luck to Tulsi, I suppose, but I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with Trump for this.